Hey there, it's Lee with LA 3D Printer Repair, and we've got an MK3 here that is going to get some assembly fixes and an MK3S upgrade, but uh, the purpose of this video is to show you how to remove the extruder in case you need to send it to us for an overhaul. Relatively simple process. If you get a clog or you know you get out of bounds and not comfortable with what you're doing, probably best to send it off to us. We'll give it a full overhaul so you can bolt it right back on. So I'm gonna show you how to pull that off Basically the same process whether you're doing, using an MK3, which you can tell if it has uh, two screws on the side and two screws on the top, that's an MK3. MK3S will have a single screw holding the top on and a flat top, and then a single screw on the left for the idler door. Um, so all you need for this process is a 2.5 millimeter driver. Uh, the Allen wrench that's included with the kit is just fine, and a set of cutters is going to make the process much easier. So we're gonna start by flipping this guy around. We're going to open the electronics box. And whenever I'm working on stuff in here, I like to go ahead and pull the door off. And it also makes for a convenient place to put the parts we're gonna remove. Now, normally we would go ahead and remove the clip on uh, the clamp holding the extruder harness. That is not here, so we can disregard that. We can just pretend that we've successfully remove that and place that here. And now we wanna go ahead and pay attention to the cables in here and remove them one by one. Starting from the top down, we can go ahead and remove the pin to sensor cable, which is in the top right there. We can go ahead and remove the, uh, if you're on an MK3, it will be a red, white, blue, black uh, sensor cable for the filament sensor. Go ahead and remove that. If you're on MK3S, it'll be white, black, red. Go ahead and remove that. It'll be on the bottom set of pins there. Uh, you can go ahead and remove the hot end thermistor, which is the one on the top right closest to you. You're going to go ahead and depress the little clip and then go ahead and gently remove that. And then the two underneath that are also removed. One is the part cooling fan and one is the extruder fan. So the part cooling fan has a red and uh, a red zip, uh, sorry, a red heat shrink on it. And it's a the black shrouded cable is the extruder fan. You want to go ahead and remove that as well. Moving down, you can go ahead and remove the heater because it's right there. It's the uh, red fiberglass cable with the big connector that just pulls straight out. And then also the extruder motor is going to be at the bottom of all the motor connections at the back. So remove that. And your entire extruder harness should be free. Next step, we're going to go ahead and remove the extruder harness covering, and then we're going to remove the, the thermistor and the heater wire. So let's leave the bottom ones intact for now. For now, we're just going to go ahead and cut the top three zip ties. Cut those and remove them. Set those aside, or trash them. Go ahead and unwrap this part of the harness from the textile sleeve. Go ahead and remove the textile sleeve, set that aside. The nylon filament should be pushed in there securely. This was not, just go ahead and remove that and set it aside, keep that for later. Um, your filament wire should be tucked underneath here. Um, so you would normally have to remove the back plate here in order to get access to it. In this case, it is just kind of sitting on the back. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the filament sensor cable for the MK3. For the MK3S, it would be buried in the harness cable so you wouldn't be doing this. And at this point, we can see the cables coming out of the back of the X carriage, as well as the heater and the thermistor wires coming out of the bottom. So next step is to remove the back plate. In order to do that, we need to take care of these heater and thermistor wires. If, you're, if they're delicate um, or you're not sure, go ahead and secure them with a zip tie before you cut them, just so they have some, some security there. So I'm just gonna pause while I go grab a zip tie. And we're back, and I've got my zip tie. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing here, but let me just see if the angle is okay here. Let me get this over here, let me get this over here, and then let me see if I can zoom in on that area. Yeah, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're going to zip tie, because actually these come zip tied, and actually, you know, they're still zip tied from the factory, so we're just gonna leave that, um, that's enough we, we just want to make sure that these are secured together. Um, generally, it's my recommendation to remove the zip tie after assembly, but it looks like this person went ahead and left them 
assembled, but I'll just go ahead and add one for illustrative purposes. So I'm going to zip tie the thermistor and the heater wires. The thermistor wires are the smaller ones. The heater wires are the, the ones that are bundled in the uh, fiberglass red insulation. So I'm going to zip tie those together for security before I cut the wires holding them because they are delicate. And so having some, some support for the uh, thermistor wire because they're a little bit delicate is nice. Now, moving on, this is the MK3. So let me zoom out a little bit here. All right, this is an MK3. So we have five fasteners in the back, an MK3S, and we only have four. So I'll start with the ones that are the same. We got two on the top here. One in the middle. And then on the MK3, you're going to have two on the bottom. On the MK3S, you're only going to have one on the bottom. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove the one that wouldn't be there on the MK3S. And then towards the bottom left, you should have one on the MK3S. And once this back plate is free, let's get this fastener out of here. Okay. Now we're just going to unroute all the cables from inside of this guy. So we've got a motor wire. We've got an extruder cooling fan. We've got a part cooling fan. We've got a pin deck. Boom. This is free. Now, if we're upgrading to MK3S, we can reuse this part, but if we're upgrading to MK3S, we won't need to retain this part. So looking at the back here, MK3 and MK3S are basically the same from this point on. Essentially, all we need to do is free the belt. So I'm just going to go ahead and it's not very tensioned, so I can go ahead and easily do that. I should have to go ahead and loosen the motor. Um, to do that, to loosen the motor in case it's too tight, First thing you're going to do is, hang on, let me zoom out so you can see where I'm pointing. So right here, there's a fastener on the top of the X motor. And so we're going to loosen that. And actually, in this case, the little square nut that should hold it is not doing anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove this. Okay. And now I'm going to loosen the top two screws here on the front of the motor. I'm going to loosen them enough where I can pivot the motor. And when I say pivot the motor, I'm not just talking about within the channels there. I mean actually like kind of pivot it past that. So there should be enough tension on that bottom screw where it can kind of stay like this. And I'm going to kind of keep it there for when I'm so I'm ready for reassembly. So now that my belt is free on the right side, I'm going to go ahead and move the belt from the left side. And so now all of these cables here are going to kind of go with the extruder, including the heater and the thermistor wires. But the heater and thermistor are going to go underneath, and these are going to go under the belt. And so the last thing we need to do to remove this, we're going to go ahead and support the front. And we want to make sure that, you know, it's fully cooled down, so we're not going to burn our fingers getting underneath here. We're going to kind of support the front, and we're just going to clip these two zip ties here. And once we do that, the whole assembly will be free. And now we just want to guide all of the cables through the rods and through the belt. See here, getting caught up down here. Just guide them out. And then just kind of loop them. Let me just set this aside. And then I've got another video on rebuilding this. So at this point, we're just going to go ahead and get this turned into an MK3S. And then we're going to work on a video. If you're doing this for an overhaul, you can kind of just package this up all together correctly. And then send it to us. And, you know, we'll send it back all put together, just like I'm going to show you, right? And just like that, our MK3S extruder is ready for installation. Um, this is the same way you would get it if you had it overhauled by us or upgraded to the MK3S. We'll go ahead and put the 10 millimeters in the back. You'll need to remove those. We'll go over that. But we're also bundled separately as far as the heater and thermistor and the everything else. So the way we're going to do this, we're just going to go ahead and put our bearing, two top bearings in the middle here, uh, bottom center bearing in the middle. And then uh, just kind of raise the belt up, make sure your belt is there. And then we're just going to kind of grab this guy by the front. And then minding 
this top bundle is going to go under the belt. Go ahead and get your zip ties right on that top bearing and then get your middle bearing in place there. Make sure your belt is underneath your zip ties, not inside of your zip ties. And then just go ahead and secure each one of those. Once you've got that on, just go ahead and get those tight and drawn up towards the top. Okay. Now, uh, before we proceed, I just want to show you what you're going to need to finish the installation. You're going to need a 2.5 mil driver. Um, a set of pliers is going to be helpful. A set of cutters. And seven zip ties. So, we've got the extruder mounted. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install our belts. So, as long as everything was kind of tensioned correctly before, it's really just a matter of installation. I'm not going to go over the full tensioning procedure. I'm just going to go ahead and pop those in. And then on this guy, I'm going to go ahead and rotate that in. Okay, and sort of as a pre-tension, I want when my motor goes sideways for there to be some tension here, and that's a little bit less tension than I would like, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove one little notch from this guy, and that's just going to give me that much more tension on there. There we go. So now that we've got some okay tension on there, I'm just going to go ahead and secure my motor. And once you've got some good tension here, basically it doesn't, doesn't need to be too tight, doesn't need to be too loose. Once you get your motor secure, you can set this guy. And this guy should not be tight. It just needs to be snugged. Its only point is to kind of hold the tension. And in order to adjust this and apply more tension, you would need to loosen the rest of the screws. Otherwise, that's just going to gouge into the side of the threads on that fastener there. So we just want that secure, just like that. So now we've got good motor or good belt tension. Our belt's installed. So now we can go ahead and cut the zip tie holding the rest of our cables. Get those kind of laid out nicely. We're going to get our piece of nylon and then we're going to make sure that's kind of sitting up up like that take it like that there's a little hole in the middle there we just want to grab that kind of wrench that in enough so that it can kind of withstand a pull just like that we're going to take our back first we want to go ahead and remove these 10 millimeters that are holding in our square nuts for transport. One, two, three, and four. And now we're going to go ahead and take our back plate. This part is the same from the MK3. And we're just going to go left to right, feed these in, pin to sensor. cooling fan nylon filament sensor motor Try and keep everything nice. And then finally, our extruder cooling fan. Now, you do want to be careful when you're kind of getting all this up here. You want to keep your, keep your cables orderly. You want to make sure nothing's getting pinched behind there. There is a place for the cables to go. 
make sure the cables are laying nicely and flat and then you can go ahead and use your thumb to kind of get it braced up on there and make sure everything is sitting correctly before you wrench anything down see my bottom bearing had shifted there so i had to make sure that that was sitting correctly and then once you've got everything basically in place a couple of things to confirm <clears throat> make sure that your loop here let me make sure this is showing up on camera yeah make sure your pin to loop here isn't too long this is the last opportunity you'll have to kind of shorten it i like to have it so that it is sitting kind of below the door where there's no interference and then also on the other side with the part cooling fan or sorry with the extruder fan you just want to make sure that that isn't sitting like it is here kind of too far out of the situation just go ahead and give that a little tug and make sure it's sitting in that little area there and then make sure your bottoms are sitting flush then go and take the one of your 10 mils go ahead and do the center first Make sure everything is sitting pretty good. Make sure it moves smoothly. And then proceed with your two more on the top. And one on the sort of bottom left hand side there. Okay, now that we've got all our cables coming out nice there, we need to go ahead and wrap those in our textile harness. So, the cleanest way to do this, and mind you, we're only going to wrap in the top cables. We're going to integrate the power and, or sorry, the heater and the thermistor wires here next. We're going to go ahead and take our textile sleeve open that up and just go ahead and wrap up the first I don't know 12 centimeters six inches or so and then with the outer flap kind of curving under and to the right if that makes sense so I'm sorry let me see if I can show you so the end of my flap is right here and it's curving kind of down like that so just like that with our zip ties going in from this side one two and three we want those secured over and on the top before I tighten those going to make sure that my bundle is nice and pushed up towards the front it's nice and tight and it's nice and uh, tight so I'm gonna go ahead and fix those three and now now that I've got some something to hold on to up here make sure it's kind of showing up on the screen there now that I've got something to hold on to here I can kind of just open the bottom of this bundle well first let me go ahead and get my power cords ready I'm getting carried away here I'm going to go ahead and free my power and thermistor cables. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the two lower zip tie entries going in again from this side. And I'm going to start by wrapping those loosely around the heater and thermistor. I'm not going to tighten them yet, and we want the heads kind of facing down and to the left. Now, I'm going to go ahead and cut the zip tie that was there from shipping. And then I'm just going to route my thermistor wire on top of my power leads. And I'm just going to kind of hold those up. There's a little kind of relief in the bottom of the extruder where you can kind of push your power leads up as you tighten these zip ties. So you just kind of want to make sure it's it's up in there and that your thermistor wires are riding on top of your heater wires and then likewise with the back one there you go 
Now that we've got that kind of ready to go, we're going to open the bottom of the textile harness. And we're going to incorporate all of the pieces. And don't worry if some pop out, we can just keep kind of going over and over again until it kind of all goes in. Just going to kind of work our way back. Get everything kind of in there. And you can see my power leads trying to walk away, so I'm just going to go back and tuck that in. And then just give it a twist, making sure that everything is properly bundled in there. Okay. Once that's all kind of looking good, make sure that you're twisted enough that you can get the end of your nylon sticking out there. Can you see that? And then that registers into a small hole. Let's see if I can zoom in here enough where you can actually see that. It's probably going to be tough, but worth a shot. So right in there, there's a hole where the nylon wants to register. So you want this kind of twisted tight, and then you want to lead with that. Get that in there. And then that'll basically want to stay. So we accounted for five out of the seven zip ties that we're taking care of. The other two are actually for inside the enclosure, but first we want to go ahead and get this clamp installed. So once you've got your nylon kind of in there, make sure your harness is your textile is kind of out of the way and all your cables are situated properly. It'll be a little difficult for me to show you the clamping, but we'll give it a shot. So a little clamp needs to go right on there like that. And then just screws right on. I like to kind of go one side at a time, being careful and mindful that nothing is binding. Going far enough until the fastener engages. And just kind of switch and bottom out the other side. Okay. Now we've got our clamp secure. So there's a couple little features inside of here which would be really difficult to show you. Let's see if I can get one of them on camera. So if you notice, right on the inside here, there's a place for a zip tie. It's not mentioned in the manual, and there's one on the kind of roof of the enclosure too. Let me kind of get this readjusted here, and you're just gonna have to kind of do your best to follow along. Um, hmm. yeah, let's see if I can kind of reach this out of the way. So we got one here on the side. And one on the top. And what those are for is if we take our harness wires, all these guys, except for the E motor wire, we can kind of guide those over like so and then down, like so. So we have some real clean cable routing there. So final steps are to just go ahead and reconnect our E-motor on the left there. Just go ahead and go from the bottom up. Go heater. Say red on the right, and black on the left the part cooling and extruder fan. Pinda is going to go on the top right up here. The filament sensor is going to be with the red wire on the out towards the edge of the PCB. And do make sure it's on the middle pins. Hopefully you have the little guide. If you don't, wouldn't hurt to print one. And then hot end thermistor goes on the top right there. Make sure none of that's in the way. And then we have seven zip ties to kill. 
One there. Two there. Three and four. One of thermistors. Five. Six. Seven. And I guess eight. And nine. Alright, final step is going to be to close up the door. Okay, and that's all we reinstalled. It's basically ready to go. The final thing to do before we run this is to pre-flight it, setting the distance between the pin to sensor and the nozzle. That is super critical. So if we do do an overhaul for you, um, unless otherwise specified, you will be expected to run a pre-flight before you run your machine. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Let us know if we can help. LA 3D Printer Repair.